What's going on? I mean, it's money, and this is Sportsbook Robbery. In this video, I'm going to give you my rundown. While I do that, you're going to see some stats and data from some key sites I use, Action Network and Team Rankings. Then I'm going to give you a size, a total, and some player props, with more stats and data from a site called Outlier. If any of this is helpful, smash that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and so you can continue to get all my picks, tips, and sports betting techniques. If you have any questions and comments, feel free to leave them. Feedback is greatly appreciated. All right, so we got Thursday Night Football, NFC South. Two teams playing on very short notice. Todd Bowles, coach of the Tampa Bay Bucks, is 3-1. He's playing Raheem Morris, coach of the Atlanta Falcons, 2-2 two two record. Got both teams coming off a win. Last year, Atlanta went into Tampa, beat the Bucks in a low-scoring game, 16 to 13. Definitely a defensive battle. Then Baker went into Atlanta. He beat the Falcons in the last seconds of the game, 29-25. Todd Bowles is a defensive-minded coach. Last year, he played against Kirk Cousins while he was still on the Vikings. Tampa won that game, 20 to 17. So he's got a little knowledge of Cousins. It's a short week for both, but there's some insider knowledge on both teams. Offensive coordinator for the Tampa Bucks, he used to be the offensive coordinator for the Rams. The head coach of the Falcons, Raheem Morris, he used to be the defensive coordinator for the Rams. So they know each other well. They used to play each other on the practice field, some head-to-head -head stuff. You know, so uh should be a decent battle. A little tricksters and stuff. Both teams haven't had good Thursday nights, losing records, like bad. Uh, Atlanta has a great kicker, this kid named Koo. Long ball, 50-plus yards, no problem, right down the middle. Tampa, good kicker too, McLaughlin. 7-7 seven and seven on the year, 3-3, three and three beyond 50 yards. we got some uh, injuries for both teams. Winfield, star safety for the Bucks. He appears to be out again. He didn't play Sunday. Uh, first round pick, Cansey. He still has not played for the Bucks. Two receivers appear to be out also for the Bucks. McMillan, he got a hamstring, and Trey Palmer. He scored last week, but he ended up getting a concussion. Uh, linebacker Dennis hurt his shoulder. He might not play. And Falcons are missing two key starters off their O line. Center, uh, Drew Dalman is on the IR. And right tackle, McCary. He missed last week's game. He might play. Got to keep an eye on that. Troy Anderson, key injury, linebacker last week, 17 tackles against the Saints. Had a pick six, but he came out of the game late with a knee injury. So we don't know if he's playing. Got to keep an eye on that too. So if he don't play, they're going to be thin in the linebacker position. Tampa, six sacks last week. Todd Bowles is going to be showing a bunch of different stuff. Blitzes, stunts, fake blitzes. Uh, he's going to be coming after Cousins. Look out for uh, sack plays, maybe some props. Or, you know, I was thinking about maybe rushing yards for Cousins, but in case he gets flushed. But the Kellys and stuff, he's not a rusher. Uh, probably had that number real, real low, no, half or a yard, maybe. Last week, Tampa shut down Detroit in the red zone, forced them to kick a lot of field goals. Leads into some plays that I'll have later on. Atlanta's offense hasn't been doing that good, even though they got a ton of weapons. They got Kirk Cousins as QB. They got Drake London, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, Daryl Mooney. They got an experienced offensive line. But nothing's really been running smooth, though. They're only averaging 53 plays a game. That's 31st in the league. They can't convert third down conversions. They're 26% on third downs. That's bottom of the league. Most importantly, they've only scored five touchdowns in four games. They're having a hard time moving the ball. Hard time sustaining drives. They didn't score an offensive touchdown and only had 14 first downs last week. They're leaving their defense out there. Kirk Cousins coming off that Achilles injury. So he had a slow start. I think he'll get better as the year goes on. We got Bijan Robinson, great runner, can catch. Most importantly, he blocks and picks up the blitzes. We got Algier, 
He's good on both, too. Got hot last week at the end, and he closed out the game. Got London, Mooney, both good receivers. Uh, tight end Pitts and Bijan could have a good night tonight. Tampa's linebackers aren't good in coverage. Cousins needs to be quick, maybe a no huddle, or quick count. Don't let Todd Bowles' defense is set up. You got to keep them on their toes. It's an indoor game, so we're playing in AC. I think that'll benefit Tampa a lot. Tampa's offense is clicking. They're running, they're passing. Baker's playing good, getting the ball out fast. I think he's going to show off tonight in prime time. We got Evans, Godwin, great receivers. Look for the anytime TDs, yards, really anything. McMillan, Palmer, wide receivers, injured. So ex-Giants, Sterling Shepard, had a great game last week. There's no lines out for him yet. I'm waiting for them. Uh, tight end, Otten and Durham, they got to get involved. They've been having slow games. Look out for plays for them, too. Uh, running back, White, he has been bad, but he hasn't been good. He needs to get involved. Needs to help them in the pass game. Uh, I think the Bucks play a cool, calm, collective in this AC stadium on prime time, and the underdogs get the victory, 27 to 23. It's going to be an over. I got some play props. Let's get into that. All right, so first up, I went with our cool. I watched him play a couple times, and it's ridiculous how good he is. Wish he was on the Bills. Uh, kicking points over seven and a half. Now I know that's kind of high. You like to try to get kicking points at key numbers, uh, six and a half, five and a half, stuff like that. But seven and a half. Last week Atlanta had serious problems getting in the end zone. All they did was kick field goals. So I think if. Uh, Tom Bowles and the Bucks could stop them in the red zone, let them get a couple field goals. Uh, I'm not saying they won't score, but if I think it's going to be a couple more field goals, and he should be able to go over this, especially with his range. Uh, and I say he can hit a 50 yarder easily. He really can. He's kicking them from 55, no problem. So, uh, yeah, he went over this twice so far this year, 14 points. Uh, possibly you can go with his field goals, maybe two field goals. Maybe that would be a little better. But uh, I just think point wise, it'd be all right. If he gets whether he gets a couple field goals, a couple touchdowns, either or, it, it gives you that uh, variation to be able to complete it. Oh, receiving yards over thirty nine and a half. I all lined it back. Always all line it back. Um, line opened at 47 and a half. It's down to 46 and a half. A little up, a little down. But uh, you could get it. I mean, you get it at 45 and a half if you want for minus 110. But to me, I always all line it back. I don't spend that much per, per play, but if I did, I would still all line it back. If you haven't noticed the books, you know, it's yeah, the when you lose by a little bit or you hook a lot, they're pretty much spot on. It's millionaire companies, billionaire companies making these plays, and uh, they're pretty close. But uh, he's cleared this three out of four. A little regression going down, but he's still getting way over it. Uh, there is an injured receiver, and I think there might be two of them out. Went over that earlier. For the year so far, averaging three receptions, just about seven targets. You know, heavily targeted. So uh, I believe he should go over it. He's uh, second in targets on the team, target percentage. So yeah, let's get it, Darnell Mooney. Yards over 29 and a half. Hasn't really been showing up. He had one good game, but it really wasn't even a great game. Uh, it was just a long catch. He ended up getting down right before the end zone. Definitely has potential. 
uh, some injuries to the linebacker position on Tampa Bay, and they're just weakened to that position. Uh, line movement, mine went way down, actually. Now I'm looking at it. 32, down to 28 now. Um, I believe he's going to have a decent game. A little of a pack to that position, but without that linebacker, too, they're going to be a little worse. Uh, he's definitely got potential. He just hasn't reached it. And sometimes these are good spots for players. You know, when they're hitting numbers, the book's got their, their lines pretty high. Head to head last year, he's cleared this. Actually, he played twice last year. He cleared it both. So, uh, yeah. Receptions, target, hold on, this one last year. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, first game, last game, three and no catches. But uh, he's getting some targets, he's getting opportunities, and uh, numbers very low because of those mistakes and errors. So uh, I expect him to go over it. All right, so we got Mr. Tyler Algier. Algier, Algier. Russian yards, uh, over 34 and a half. Minus 115, DraftKings. Line has started climbing. Over that 32 and a half. Actually, I didn't play 34 and a half. What did I play? That's where they got it at now. 32 and a half, I believe. I don't know if you can get it right now. I did drop these in the community last night. Uh, the slip, just so you guys can check it out in case the line movement or whatnot, or do your own research. So uh, that's another reason why you got to subscribe and turn your notifications on. That's where you get all my plays and everything I do. But yeah, he, uh, you know, a little hit or miss. He's the second back. Uh, why he hasn't been doing that well and second half of the last game, Algier was cooking, so they let him cook. Uh, Russian attempts. After the, that first game, he's been getting around eight. Uh, he's exceeded 34 and a half in eight of his last 10 games at home, averaging 46. You know, he's averaging, uh, Say like six yards per carry. On this rush, 15, 12, 15. Yards after contact he gets. So it means he's you know he's not getting getting down that first hit, that first touch. But uh what else? What else? What else? Tampa Bay's rushing defense. Yards allowed overall twenty second to the running back fifteen to the middle of the pack. But, uh, yeah, I expect them to go over this numbers too low. Side of things. Uh, kicker. Right back to it. Chase McLaughlin. Kicking points over six and a half. Minus 130. Fandle. Uh, got a couple of different levels at different sites. So always line shop. Have multiple books. Um, seven for seven for the year, three for three, um, 50 yard plus kicks. There's three times he's went over this averaging eight and a half points. Uh, a couple of attempts a game, mostly. For his David, I got a smoke. But, uh, other than that, he's been going over it. Kicking pretty good. 40 plus yards, easily 50 plus, 50 plus, 50 plus, 240 plus. Uh, longest field goals, 52, 55, and 56. Head to head 100%. Let's get it, Chase McLaughlin.
All right, tight ends. Uh, Cade Iron, receiving yards, 24 and a half. Old line did back once again. It might say 25 plus on FanDuel, but uh, minus 150, both books right now. Mind open at 30. It's at 29 and a half. Got a little lower. Uh, it's cleared this two games out of the four. Uh, let's check it out. Wasn't involved in the first two games, but the last two games they started involved with him again. He's third on the list in uh, targets percentage, 21 targets so far. Tampa Bay, 61% of that plays a pass. Uh, I expect him to go over it. Overall, where is it? 12th in receiving yards, Atlanta is 18th to the tight end position. So they are letting the uh, middle of the field get open a little bit. But about uh, 24 and a half tight end, it would be one or two catches. He keeps these targets and uh, these targets, so we should easily go over there, no problem. First quarter. All right, so last but not least, uh, Mayfield, rushing yards over nine and a half, minus 113, FanDuel, uh, open down 11 and a half, down to 10 and a half, call line it back. Um, it's kind of over this three out of four. You know, he's not scared to take off. Some of them are goal line rushes. You can check out his anytime touchdown. Gets in that red zone. Definitely take off. Cleared this three out of four. Uh, overall, rushing yards allowed. Atlanta's 25th. Ranked 32nd to the QB. I was going to do his longest rush. They got it like seven and a half. But I figured if he's at the goal line... Red zone tries to go. I mean, my, you know what I mean? Sometimes the longest rush or longest pass gets you in trouble. It depends. Uh, a couple of rushing attempts throughout these games. Three, five. They gave me a none, but they did horrible. Uh, four. So average yards per rush, seven, six. And, uh, two and a half. So, yeah. Let's get it. Uh, looking out for some other plays. All the lines didn't come out. I'll definitely have some live bets. Uh, I appreciate everyone. If you could like the video, new viewers, subscribe, and uh, let's turn them notifications on. Appreciate everyone. Ace Money the name, getting paid for the game. Let's go. <laughs>